Hey guys, welcome back to another Sparks episode from the D-Hard House podcast. That's right, it's episode 38. We're climbing up in the numbers so slowly. Yeah, I, I'm going to be upfront and admit I'm the worst podcaster ever, and I'm, I'm working on it, I swear, I swear. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, this is the D-Hard House podcast. This is my podcast about all the crafty things. My name is Alicia. It is July something. I don't even know anymore. Um, it's like the 21st. Yeah. It's been a month, and I'm really sorry about that because, yeah, uh, guys, I got married and went on my honeymoon, and I just didn't really want a podcast. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know, I'm terrible. I should have said something, to be honest, and Michael said that. He's like, you should have posted a video saying, guys, I'm not going to do a podcast because I'm getting married, and I'm like, yeah, had I thought I had, like, a good person, I would have done that, so even Michael knows better than me. Okay, so yes, I'm married. We got married in the beginning of July, July 8th, and then we went on our honeymoon. We went to Las Vegas again. Why did we go there? Because it was easy to plan a last minute vacation. Yeah, we're so organized. <laughs> Whatever. Um, but yes, it's official. And we're back. We've had our vacation from our vacation, um, because that is now a thing that we like to do. Uh, <laughs> no, um, honestly, though, we got back from our vacation, and neither of us felt very well. So, yeah, we had to take a vacation from our vacation because we, first of all, I still have, like, is it called vertigo where you feel motion sick even though you're not even in a vehicle? Yeah, that's how I feel. I feel like I'm riding an elevator and all I've done is gotten up out of bed and, you know, consumed some of my coffee. And I feel like I just stepped off an elevator. Okay, not right now. It's like 3 in the afternoon right now. But I'm saying like for the past few days, even just sitting here... I feel like I'm on a train or in a boat or something. Like, I feel like I'm moving and I'm not. I'm just sitting here. So, I don't know. I will keep you guys updated. I already have a doctor's appointment on Monday. I'm hoping that it's just some kind of, like, inner ear infection and they can give me some antibiotics and I can stop feeling motion sick. So... But we did, I mean, we drove up to Dallas to fly out of Dallas to Las Vegas. And then all around Las Vegas, we were, you know, walking and riding the monorail and up and down elevators and escalators. And if you've ever been there, you know what I'm talking about. And then to fly back and then drive back, I mean, it was just a lot of moving around. So... I don't know. I just, I think I have an ear infection and we just need to fix that. So that's my story. Because that's what you wanted to know. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, I am drinking coffee. Like I said, it's about three in the afternoon. I need to pick me up. I am knitting on a sock right now and I'll just stop before I even start this row. Um, yeah, so, uh, for those of you who might be new to the podcast, welcome. This is, I guess, a usual intro where I automatically start blathering. Uh, <laughs> and if you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back. I really, really appreciate it. And I, like I said, I'm working on it uh, <laughs> to be a better podcaster. So, um, yeah, we're in Texas. And if you're not in the southern U.S. currently, uh... Congratulations, because it is crazy hot down here. I mean, 
Today, it's supposed to be a high of 104 degrees, and it has been like that for weeks. And we had a little bit of, break, of a break with some rainstorms, but it is just crazy hot here. So, um, first of all, me wearing this is, like, incredible because <laughs> I am so hot. Plus, I'm drinking coffee. I mean, yes, I'm indoors and the AC is on, but still, it's hot. Um... Yeah, and it was really hot when we were in Las Vegas as well, like 100 plus degrees, and it rained while we were there, so it was also humid, which is just the worst, so whatever, but we, uh, we hung out by the pool, and we stayed inside in the air conditioning, and enjoyed our uh, alcoholic beverages, and just relaxed, and it was wonderful. So... Um, yeah, it's hot, and it does not look like that is going to change anytime soon. And from what I've been seeing on other podcasts out there, uh, this this heat wave is not just affecting us. It's unseasonably hot pretty much ev everywhere. I mean, if it is not unseasonably hot where you are, please enjoy for the rest of us, because <laughs> I am just dreaming of snow and rain and and honestly I, I would be okay with some clouds honestly um because it's I mean I'm looking out the window right now and it is a cloudless sky it is just and and that's what it has been is just sunny days no clouds so there's no there's like no shade anywhere it's just crazy hot um so I'm excited for when that finally breaks and we can get um, some more reasonable uh, temperatures around here. So uh, yeah, our our electric bill has been what you would expect when your air conditioner runs all the time. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, I remember living in Michigan and it was the heat bill in the winter that you had to save up for. And down here, it's the AC bill in the summer that you have to save up for. So, I mean, pick your poison, so. Anyway, so, it's July 21st, and uh, the fall semester is going to start up here soon. It just, this summer flew by like crazy. Next week, we have, um, uh, this year they're calling it Kids College. Uh, when I did it two years ago, they called it STEM Camp. I think maybe they renamed it because it's not just STEM programs. But um, for those of you who don't know, I'm a college math professor. Um, I don't officially have the title of professor. I only have a master's degree. Only. Uh, <laughs> whatever. I teach college level math. And uh, this summer we're doing a program for um, elementary and middle school students. Um, I'll be teaching a group of middle school students and we're going to do a math activity about fractals which is going to be super fun. They are going to create um, not a full fractal because if you know anything about fractals they're infinite and as cool as it would be to actually make one of those it would take a really long time. Mm -hmm. But we're going to make a fractal approximation. We are go They're going to write a little bit of a computer program, and they're going to run this simulation. And, and they're going to do some calculus. They're going to help me compute some limits. I know. It's going to be really fun. And I'm sure everyone's like, I'm going to turn this podcast off now because she's talking about math. And, and I swear I'll stop right here. I swear. But uh, no, it's really fun. I did the same activity two years ago and the students loved it. Um, in fact, I had lunch with them before the activity and they were talking about how they were fans of Doctor Who, which was really fun because they all, pretty much all of them knew what a TARDIS was. And for those of you who don't know, the TARDIS is the doctor's like time traveling spaceship if you will and it's you know bigger on the inside so the fractal we created um, it has finite volume 
but infinite surface area. And the kids thought it was really cool because they were like, oh, it's like a reverse TARDIS where it's actually bigger on the outside. Yeah, I know. It was really cool. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so I'm excited to do that next week. And, uh, and then have a couple weeks off to do more knitting because guys I have been designing some shawl patterns I know what the bug has bitten me and I have I have just let that bite swell and this analogy has to die now so uh, <laughs> I am wearing um, I think I showed this to you guys last time a month is a really long time I am so sorry I'm just gonna keep apologizing so, um, I designed the shawl, and I just posted the pattern today, right before hitting record. So, um, let me just take this off and show you. And I can't even remember how many times I wrapped this around. Do you do this? You go to take off your shawl and you, like, choke yourself? Really fun, isn't it? Okay. So, I finished this. I showed this to you last time, but... The pattern is up now and I'm showing it to you backwards wrong side okay so this is the daydreamer shawl yeah that's right I just wore this outside in the 100 plus degree weather and took pictures yeah uh, <laughs> no the um the sunlight is really nice for taking pictures but really horrible if you want to actually sit outside and not, you know, bake to death. So, but anyway, uh, yes, yeah, so this shawl requires zero purling. That's right, it's all knits. Knits and yarn overs and slips and decreases and, and increases, but they're all knit. So, for those of you wanting a very fast uh, project, because I know, at least for me, I'm a much faster knitter than purler, and this shawl is less than 100 grams of fingering weight yarn, so less than a skein, and if you wanted to make it bigger, you always could, because that's really easy, but anyway, it has garter and texture and lace, and I just used two contrasting colors from my stash. And honestly, I designed it so that you could use up, there we go, maybe, you can use up leftovers from other projects. So I had made, so the main color on here, the, the speckle on here, the light colored yarn, right? This, I have this much left over. Yep, I have 10 grams, 10, 10 grams left over. I bought, this is um, Yarn Cafe Creations. And I'm going to scoop my, I just need to sit back. I keep sitting up so my head gets dropped off. So this is, <laughs> this is Yarn Cafe Creations. And this is, uh, Ocean Mist is the colorway. So it's this really pretty pale blue and white background. And then she threw in these speckles and it's gorgeous. So uh, I bought a full skein of this, so 100 grams. This is a 75-25 merino nylon, superwash merino and nylon. So I knit a pair of shorty socks out of this. I also got a coordinating mini skein to go with it, which I use for the heel. Did I also use it for the toe? I don't know. But I knit shorty socks out of this, and they were really short. So I pretty much just knit two feet with a little bit of a cuff, and there goes my arm. Uh, <laughs> and so I had a lot left over. In fact, I had 70 grams left over. All right. So I only used 30 grams of this yarn to knit my shorty socks. And how I thought I had, I would have brought those socks in. Whatever. They're in my sock drawer. So, uh, I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with 70 grams? I mean, it's almost a full skein. And then I had, uh, this is the darker blue on here. This is Cascade, <laughs> Cascade, wow, Cascade Heritage. 
Um, and this is also a 75-25 superwash merino nylon. Or it's not going to focus, but you can see the color. It's just a solid. It's not tonal or anything. Um, and it really matches some of the speckles that she has in the ocean mist. So I thought that's awesome because it coordinates, but it contrasts. So, yeah, which makes these stripes. I can't, I don't know which side of the body I'm, I'm pointing to here, but um, if you use two contrasting colors, then the stripes really pop out at you, which is nice. It also makes this texture stitch really stand out as well. Um, so up here, let me get really close to you, <laughs> is the texture in just the one color and then you got the texture with the two color which is I think it looks really cool so um so yeah I had 70 grams of the main color and I only used 60 so I still have 10 grams left over and then I started out with only 30 grams of this and I have three left over so I used 27 grams of this so for a grand total of 87 grams of fingering weight yarn so not even a full skein but you know I wanted it to be a leftovers friendly shawl because we all have leftovers from other projects in fact I forgot to mention this blue uh, was left over from my find your fade shawl and I used a good portion of this in my find your fade shawl in fact I used 70 grams of it and I had 30 left over and it's like what am I gonna do with this so um so yeah, I came up with this. This is called the Daydreamer. It is available on Ravelry. And for the first month of release, so from today until August 21st, this pattern will be 20% off. No coupon code needed. It's just everyone gets the discount, whether you watch the podcast or not. 20% um, discount off from the price. So, yay. Um... So I have designed and knit two other shawls. What? What? I know. <laughs> um, they are still being blocked and having the ends woven in and things like that to finish up. So I'm not going to show them to you today. That will help motivate me to do another podcast in a week to show you guys those shawls all finished. <laughs> Yeah, I am, I'm not even kidding. I made this in a week. I made, actually, both of the other ones also in a week each. So, I can just do a shawl a week, right? That's sustainable, completely sustainable. With a full-time teaching job. I, I, I've got this, yeah. Mm -hmm. It is bad. I really enjoy it, you guys. It's super fun. So, um, that's all that I've finished. I have this finished, and I have the two other things that aren't ready to be shown yet because they're pinned down on blocking mats, so <laughs> next time. Anyway, so, um, ooh, let's talk about the shop. I have the D Heart House Creations shop on Etsy where I sell handmade bags and hand dyed yarn. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <laughs> I have been hanging on to these for a month because I remember I recorded the last episode, episode 37, and then I was like, oh, I'm going to dye up some yarn, and then I can show it on the next podcast, and then we waited and waited and waited, and yeah, so anyway. Uh, I love this. I've been, I've not used this. I've not touched these because I wanted to make sure I had them to show you guys. But I have dyed up, let me move this card here, some minis. Okay, there's my card. All right. I have a mini skein set in the shop in my fancy Ziploc bag. Anyway. Uh, I'm going to take them out of the bag, but I just think it looks so good inside of the bag as a set. <sighs> okay, I'm a total nerd. I 
I teach math at a college, and go figure, I love Star Wars so much. So, um, I have some mini skein sets posted in the shop, and um, each of these minis is 20 grams, and you get five of them in the set. So, it's 100 grams total. So, the mini skeins are dyed um, with Star Wars planets in mind. So, oh my gosh. All right. So, this one, can you guess what this one is? I mean, if you can't guess, this one is Tatooine, right? So, the desert planet, it's brown with speckles of orange and yellow. Yeah, yeah, so mm -hmm. Tatooine. And then if you have Tatooine, you have to have sort of its polar opposite, which is Hoth. And Hoth is natural, the natural white cream color with um, blue and some blue speckles and some gray speckles just kind of lightly put in there. So, Tatooine and Hoth, and my lighting is terrible, and I'm so sorry. Okay. Now, this one may not be super popular, but, like, I had to look up the name, to be honest. Michael knew it off the top of his head. This one is Dagobah. This is the planet where Yoda was training Luke Skywalker in the misty swamp forest of a planet um, where Yoda lives. So this is a beautiful dark teal um, tonal. Oh my god, I love that one. I want a sweater. I want a, like a cardigan out of this color. No jokes. Look at how pretty that is. Come on. There you go. Oh, I love that one. Okay. So that one's Dagobah. And then we have the, uh, I remember watching Star Wars as a kid. And I, of course, loved the Ewoks because they're teddy bears. Like, seriously? So, this one is uh, Endor, which is the the Ewok planet. So, um, and that one's, you know, a forest, which is super green. Mm -hmm. So, um, this one is dyed with different uh, shades of green, so it's mostly tonal. And then I ever so slightly speckled in some brown in there. Come on, camera. There you go. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. It's super bright. It's like a Kelly green. Like, mm, everything's getting blown out. It's the worst thing ever. But you get the picture. And if you don't, check out Etsy where I have pictures. Yeah, okay. And the last one is not technically a planet. But it's the size of a planet, and it's, like, crucial to the plot and everything. I mean, I don't want to give spoilers, but um, these aren't based off from the new Star Wars movies. They're, like, the ones from the 80s that have been around forever. So if you don't know what the Death Star is, just stop watching my podcast. <laughs> um, yeah, so this one is Death Star. Uh, so this is uh, green and gray. So, uh... I wish I had better lighting. With more funds, I promise you I will buy studio lights and have better lighting for my podcast. I'm not even joking. I have it in my cart on Amazon and I'm just waiting until I have the funds to buy it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it's green and gray and I have some speckles. It's a speckly tonal it's mostly tonal. But yeah. So the Death Star is gray and the laser is green. 
you know, that kills the planets. So gray and green, but oh my gosh. So this is my, this is my planet pack, if you will. My Star Wars planet pack. So yeah, Tatooine, Hoth, Dagobah, Endor, and Death Star. Excuse me, totally had to sneeze. Yeah, so I have this posted in the shop and I have a few of them listed. And this one I set aside for me so that I could fondle it all that I want and no one's gonna get, you know, all my skin cells. Um, <laughs> but I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to knit with it until I showed you guys. Oh my God. Yeah, so I'm totally going to be designing a shawl for mini skeins. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. I love it. So, uh, D Hard House Creations on Etsy is where you can find that. And if you want any of those colors in full skeins, I am happy to do that for you. Um, I wanted to start with the mini set so that I could play around with all kinds of different colors and not run out, run out of yarn. So, But I have taken diligent notes on these colorways so that I can reproduce them. And if you want these in full skeins, I'm happy to do that for you. Oh, Dagobah. Dagobah. Oh my God. <sighs> okay. So moving on, past my obsession with all of the yarn things, because you understand. I mean, why else are you watching this podcast? If you didn't understand, why would you still be here? So, I'm just all over the place and so rambly. Okay, so I've also posted more bags in the shop. I can't even remember. Um, but check it out. I also made a trip to the fabric store. Have more plans. All the things, I'm telling you. I just can't pick one and stick with it. I have to do all the things. Anyway. Okay, so, um, yeah, I'm working on a sock, so we'll just move to works in progress. Um, I just started this the other day, so I would have something mindless to work on. Um, as fun as designing is it is also nice to have something mindless to work on like when you're watching a movie with your husband and you don't want him to feel like you're not paying attention yeah so <laughs> anyway I just started this the other day these are socks for Michael and this is Patton's Croy in some color way that I don't know perfect um have the yarn in my yarn it. Uh, yeah, so this is a self-striping yarn. It's blues and grays, very, very uh, manly colors, very appropriate. Uh, so I'm knitting these on US size one needles. These are from Knit Picks. If you don't know about knitpicks.com, you should check it out because it's a great place to get affordable uh, yarn and needles and all the things. Uh, this yarn I did get from, I think I got it from Hobby Lobby. They had a sale, so naturally. Uh, so I started with the toe. I did a Turkish cast on. Um, increase just standard toe. I'm going to do uh, one by one ribbing on the top of the foot and just plain stockinette on the bottom and then yeah so it'll be a nice stretchy form fitting sock. So this is my mindless knit to work on while on the treadmill or watching new TV shows and movies. Um, yeah. I also started, when did I start this? I don't even remember when I started this, but I started another um, fingerless mitt. 
So um, I had finished a pair of fingerless mitts and I'm going to write up the pattern and I was like, oh, I really need to knit it again because I didn't take notes last time, like a genius. So um, yeah, this is more Patton's Croix yarn in a beautiful gray marl color. So it will pretty much match anything. I've just started the thumb gusset. So I have some stitch markers on here. Um, here. Here we go. These are some stitch markers I made with some random beads that I had. But um, yeah, so these are on my US size zero, uh, my chow goos, which I absolutely love and I totally order through Amazon. Um, this is the first one out of two. I've only just started. I don't like I said, I don't even remember when I started this. But it's gonna need to be finished. Yeah, so where will that yeah, maybe. <sighs> I haven't touched these in a while. I think because I got to the thumb gusset and then you know realized I'd have to start taking notes and didn't want to, so I set it down. <laughs> um, speaking of chow goos, I bound off a shawl last night as Michael and I were watching Supergirl, and we're we're finishing up season three of Supergirl on Netflix. Yep. So I was working on this shawl. And I was finishing up. I was in this garter section. It was super mindless. I was able to pay attention to the show. And I bound off. And then, of course, immediately started thinking about the next shawl that I'm going to do. I wound up all the yarn for the next shawl. And went to cast on with the same needles. You guys are going to love this. I just have to grab this over here. Alright, so I'm using my chow goose. US size 4, which is great for shawl knitting with fingering weight yarn. I put them in my lap and I'm sitting in my recliner chair and I put the recliner down and I didn't realize I caught my needle in the chair. Um, for those of you who don't know, both of these should be straight. Yeah. I almost cried. I almost cried. Oh my god. Like, wh first of all, what a strong recliner chair. But look at that bend! Holy crap, you guys! Oh my gosh. That's a save. Wow, you can actually kind of read that. Chow Goo, size 4, 3.5 millimeter. Anyway, yeah, look at that bend. Holy cow. That was my chair. I can't even use these now. Like, are you kidding me? I'm so. Oh. So, what did I do? First thing, when, first thing I went, no freaking way almost cried. Then I tried bending it back. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, then I got on my phone and I ordered another uh, another circular needle in this size. <sighs> yeah. So be careful, okay, because I mean these are made out of steel stainless steel or something. They're really strong. They're really sturdy. I especially love the join on between the cable um, and the needle. Chowgoos are by far my favorite. And, you know, I just want to let you know they're not indestructible. Uh, my recliner chair did this. And I will now forever be vigilant about that. <sighs> yeah. 
Yeah, after I ordered the other pair, I specifically set these aside in my craft room so I could show you guys and share with you my tale of woe about my knitting needles. So, nothing wrong with this product at all. It was totally my fault. Let me just make sure to make that clear. This was completely my fault. I didn't realize that this needle was hanging between my legs over the side and I put my recliner down and it totally crunched this needle. So it's completely my fault. I, I bought another pair. They should arrive on like Monday. So, but just be careful. I mean, if my reclining chair can do this, I mean, any car door or <laughs> name any other strong object uh, could do this too. So, whatever. Now I can throw these away. <laughs> okay. That's a bummer. On a more happy note, I think I have one more work in progress to talk about. And, of course, I put it on the floor like a professional. So let me just grab that. This project, I feel like, is never going to end. First of all, if you're seeing this bag, then you know this is... I'm going to talk about my dad's sweater. So, uh, I'm knitting my dad a sweater. Let me remind everyone of the backstory. I learned to crochet when I was five years old. My grandmother and mother and other grandmother crocheted. And of course I wanted to, you know, be like the grown-ups and I wanted to learn as well. So they ever so patiently taught me. Of course I was horrible at it. <laughs> but when I was five or six I promised my dad I was gonna make him a sweater. Then at some point in my teenage years um, I got more serious about crocheting and dad brought up the sweater. When am I gonna get that sweater you promised me? It has been a joke ever since. Every Christmas and birthday, where's my sweater? Where's my sweater? Okay, I'm now 30. And I'm finally making Dad his sweater. So, uh, we picked out the Ranger pattern by Jared Flood, which is this wonderful textured cardigan. Very flattering. Uh, Dad has chosen this beautiful gray color for the sweater. So, in the pattern, you knit the sleeves first, then the body you knit bottom up, and then you join the sleeves on to knit the yoke. So, this is a mess because I have knit both sleeves, the body, and I've now joined everything together and I've just started the yoke. Yeah, so let's see if I can do this. I'm gonna set pull more yarn out and set this bag down. Okay. I have no idea where I am. I have not worked on this in a while. Yeah. All right. So, we've got the body and yep, here's the front. So, it is not knit in the round. It is knit flat. So, I knit the body flat. This is the front here, the this, this space in the cardigan. We've got the right sleeve and the left sleeve. And I have kept the, the waist yarn in there um, just in case. <laughs> um, I realize I made a mistake and have to pull back. But yeah, this is the waist yarn that the, the sleeves were on. And I just, I've kept it in there. Uh, yeah, so it's all on there. And it, this is the, you know, the max number of stitches. So each row is just insanely long. There's a little bit of short row shaping, but... I just, I did some of it, but I didn't do all of it because 
I took dad's measurements and he wanted the cardigan to be a bit uh, a few inches longer than what the pattern called for so you know where it says and knit straight until the piece measures this many inches I knit until the measurements we came up with and then it said now do some short row shaping before you join on the and I was like oh I guess I should have read ahead further <laughs> and realized that we would add like an extra inch or so with the short row shaping so I did skip one section of short row shaping because I didn't want it to be too big anyway I'm out of coffee I'm out of coffee guys okay so yeah we're on to the yoke now and you know then the last thing will be the uh, the button band stuff and I'll have to once I finish this part the whole yoke I'll have dad try it on and then we'll decide if he wants buttons or if he wants a zipper. So we shall see. I think it'll look really schnazzy with buttons, but if he wants to use it as more of like a, a jacket, then he might prefer a zipper. But just look at how massive, I mean, and, and my dad's a pretty big guy. I'm telling you guys, this is this is a lot of knitting. Dad, you may only get one sweater from me. <laughs> oh gosh, but I love this gray color. It's really nice. So it's a worst weight pattern. I'm using U.S. size something fives. I believe I need U.S. fours for the ribbing. So that needle I crunched. Yeah. Um, I mean, I have other U.S. size 4s, it's just I love my chow goos, so what can I say? Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm really excited to finish this thing. Um, I better have it finished by Christmas. If I can't do that, then, you know, but I've been knitting on this for months, just on and off. You know, I haven't been only knitting on this, so... But yeah, it is just, it's it's a pile of yarn, you guys. It's so unmanageable. I, I have the longest cord possible, and the stitches are just stuffed on here, so I don't know. Little by little, a row a day until it's finished, pretty much, so, yep. I've put a few more squares on my buffalo check blanket, but not enough to really show you guys. Um, I'm mostly shawl knitting because I'm just, I'm, I'm on a kick, you know. I've got the mojo, I've got the inspiration, and it's just going, and I'm loving it. Um, yeah. Do you guys like my, um, my fiber storage right here? Yeah. This is this is one of my bags and I have um fiber in it that I'm spinning on a drop spindle. So I have it hanging off a drop spindle right there. Um yeah. I think that's it, you guys. I have I have a lot of stuff to do. If you could see this craft room, you would see it is a disaster zone. I mean, I can't get anything done in here because it is just a mess. And if you guys suffer from the same problem, it makes me feel a little bit better. But but I clean this room and I'm like, ah, I can do stuff in here now. Like I can move around and there's surfaces to use. And then you start crafting and you occupy said surfaces. And it's not like I clean up after myself every day. It's I clean up after I finish the project. So that stuff just sits out. And then it's like, hmm, I can't do anything else in here. Yeah. So that is the state of my room. This is the clean side. <laughs> this is the organized wall in the craft room. But, yeah, so, Daydreamer.
is available on Ravelry. We have the Star Wars yarn available on Etsy as well as several bags. And more to come. Yeah. So, um, if you have not already subscribed, do subscribe. So you can get notifications when I do finally put up episodes. This is just going to be a running joke now. Uh, <laughs> you can also follow me on Instagram as readknitrun. And on Ravelry, I am a Liddy Knits 2. Feel free to peruse my projects and things on there. I do try to keep notes and keep track of the yarn that I use. Uh, I also post show notes in the D Heart House podcast Ravelry group. If you would like links to any of the things that I've talked about on the episode, you can find those there. Also join the group if you want to participate in any knit-alongs and giveaways that we do here on the podcast. I do have a couple of year-long knit-alongs running in the group right now about knitting, crocheting, sewing making blankets. We have an adult size blanket make-along and a baby blanket make-along. And they're called make-alongs because the craft you use to make them does not matter. Knit, crochet, sew, weave. The more creative the better. <laughs> it's just about finish finishing uh, any blankets you have laying around. Uh, yes. So, that's the deal. I'm going to have some kind of knit-along coming up. I have some plans in the works with the uh, new seasons around the corner, especially some cooler weather when um, knitting is more agreeable. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hear Marjorie at the door. So, uh, I will catch you guys next time. Bye!